We were all mesmerized by the Clarence Thomas hearings this weekend. What delayed the confirmation vote was, of course, accusations of sexual harassment against Thomas. One of America's foremost experts on this subject is Professor Catherine A. McKinnon of the University of Michigan Law School. You may have read the cover story about her recently that was in the New York Times Magazine. After talking with Professor, Professor McKinnon, we will be joined by Elizabeth Holtzman and others to continue our discussion and to hear your views on our call-in phone lines. First off, we want to talk to Professor Catherine McKinnon. She is well known uh, as one of the foremost experts on sexual harassment and also on pornography. I know she wants to talk about that, but first, <laughs> if nothing else, you want to talk about that. Absolutely. Why? Why are you, I mean, you said that to me, that, and I said to you as, before we began that pornography never really became a subject no, of they, these hearings. And it seems to me originally um, that there was a possible cover-up of the complaint. That is, when Professor Hill brought it forward, uh, nothing was done about it. So that's one cover-up. Uh, what then cover up happened? By whom? Well, it's hard to say, and exactly why. Um, you know, it's perhaps the case that the Chairman Biden decided to respect her confidence in this. Uh, it's it's really unclear. But it, what happened was that the country refused to accept that, uh, and the well, rest of the Senate refused to accept that. What do you mean that. by the country refused? The country didn't. Well, I mean, there was, there was something of, of an uprising uh, of people saying that it was important to look into these allegations. Sure, all right? So to come to my point, then there was a second cover-up, a far more effective one, in the apparently unanimous, as far as we can tell, undissented from agreement across partisan lines of all of these men on this committee not to ask Clarence Thomas about the pornography. Now, Clarence Thomas, of course, said, I will not discuss my private life. He didn't say his pornography was in his private life. He didn't even go that far. Um, so he didn't specifically rule pornography out of bounds in terms of what he would not speak to? Well, no, he didn't specifically, and no one said, does that mean you won't talk about pornography? Because, of course, that would suggest that pornography is in his private life. Do you believe it is? Well, um, it's pretty unusual uh, for someone to have consumed pornography and not to continue to do so, although it's always possible. You mean if you watch pornography in law school, you would later watch it in later life? or it's, Well, it's, it's possible that someone would not, but it's, but it's probable they would continue. What I think is, is the issue here is that uh, Professor Hill's allegations clearly raise the factual question, did he consume pornography during the period of her allegations? In other words, what's, what we've seen in this whole episode is as if people think the only way to test the reliability of her accusations is by interrogating her credibility. And the only way to interrogate her credibility is to attempt to assassinate her character and see if she recovers. There's another whole way to do this, and that is to try to factually document whether there was pornography at the time in his life, such that, and his use of it, his relationship to it, and so on. The FBI can go do this. This is what they are good at. Do you know and whether they did it or not? I don't know. I, I would suspect, uh, being thorough, that they may well have. I should also say about this privacy business is that, you know, basically these men on the Judiciary Committee uh, supposedly engaging in a conspiracy against Mr. Thomas to do anything whatever, to go through anything whatever to try to get him off, respected the lines that he apparently drew here. In other words, they weren't all that eager uh, to do it. And it, what that means is they protected the pornography and his possible And why do you it. think they did it? Because you're not just talking about Republicans. It had That's to be. Right. It's a Democratic majority chaired by Joe Biden. You are right. And why do you think they did it? Because you had men, Biden makes, a, he makes the point consistently that he is very sensitive to women's issues and pornography is clearly one of those issues. Yes, and I actually for one believe him. Yeah. Um, I believe uh, the way, him from the way he has pursued this, but the one did thing I do not believe um, is that uh, they either went as far as they should have into this, and I have some question about whether they even used everything they had. It seemed to me that they were either bullied by him or that the sort of orgy of male bonding and, and you know, sort of stroking of each other that they engaged in at the end of uh, Judge Is Thomas's testimony was the kind of male bonding uh, that you see across race, across party. Is it possible they And they all talked they about how bad they felt about this entire thing. Is it possible they were fearful if they pushed too hard of being accused of racism? Well, yes, that's what I mean by yeah. his bullying and his intimidation. What he engaged in is what might actually be called an affirmative action defense to a, a sexual harassment charge. I mean, if, if you know, the, you take the, you know, the negative and nasty and, in my view, inaccurate view of affirmative action, you say it means, you know, you want to treat me specially because I'm black. And so what yeah. he said is basically, um, you know, because black men have been invalidly accused uh, of various nebulous forms of sexual abuse, you shouldn't look very deeply into this one. 
is the reason you think this is important because of it suggests if he looked at pornographic films on videotape that suggested an attitude about women or is it more important because you think it is it corroborates her allegations both it, it corroborates her allegations absolutely because where she's taking the credibility beating in this is directly on the pornography. That is, was not something that the four witnesses were able to testify explicitly to of, as to something she mentioned in the past. Because they never heard it. it is, yeah. They hadn't heard it, of course. And it is not something that, the, that she told the FBI. So that is where she is taking the credibility beating, and that is how to support her credibility, one. But that's and a leap two, of faith. Your it, other it, point. It's a leap of faith to establish the fact that if he, that he or any other individual who watches pornography might use pornography in some effort to come on to a woman. Oh yes. I'm not saying it means that. Okay. I'm just saying that you take her account and you break down its pieces and you see what it would take to support each piece. And the pornography piece is the piece that people find so unbelievable as well as so monstrous as well as so incredible and so on. Um, and it seems to me very important to have done it, to have corroborated that. You are... Plus the attitudes that a person does develop in a way that is documented by feet of social science, feet of it, that is not disputed. That is to say, the attitudes men develop as a result of consuming pornography are absolutely antithetical to women's equality. It makes them believe women want to be raped, especially the kind of pornography she mentioned. So every man who watches pornography believes, develops an antisocial attitude with respect to women? Well, it... I mean, is it that much of a direct link? Because it seems to me that... The studies do indicate that uh, men who are otherwise not predisposed toward what you might want to call misogyny, that right. is, the hatred of women, right. um, what these materials do in their consumption, that is, in particular, in an intense way, the materials involving sex with animals and right. rape right. scenes, those have been shown, particularly positive outcome rape scenes, that is where the woman is shown to want the rape. For example, the women with the large breasts who want all this variety right. of sexual activity. And from um, watching pornography, you get that, that is the message learn, that comes to a learn, human being who watches pornography. Yes, you learn in your body, not just in your mind, that women want to be raped, that pe women fantasize sexual abuse, that women are at the workplace desiring to be sexually uh, assaulted, really, by men. That this is women's true, deep desire. You, so then we get all these, all this. She fantasized it as if that is just a, you know, response that comes out of nowhere. You believe her? Yes, I believe her. Because? Well, because I know that everything that she is saying uh, is something that is directly corroborated by my knowledge of pornography, and that her way of proceeding. In other words, she talked about that. If you were as a lawyer, if you were on a jury, you would have convicted him of sexual harassment based on her testimony alone. No, I was just beginning with her okay. testimony. Um, that, for example, when she talked about the coke can, uh, with uh, the comment about the coke can with the right. pubic hair on right. it, pornography has in it women being penetrated forcibly by coke cans. That's where the pubic hair came from in the account. In other words, if you know these kinds of things about pornography, it isn't at all. Uh, unworthy of What's apparent of is there clearly all kinds of levels of pornography. Well, yeah, but yeah. this is a, a fairly common thing. Let me just thing. come to this. And it was corroborated, and the way she Corroborated behaved. in that she told other people that she'd been sexually harassed. That's Consistency the of accusation. That's the principal corroboration, is it not? Well, yes, but you also don't need corroboration in a okay. sexual harassment case. In fact, by regular civil standards, um, if, uh, if someone believed her, uh, she would have established her case in here. You have enormous respect within the legal community, within the feminist community, within uh, the community of people interested in seeing the sexual harassment case against Clarence Thomas fully aired. Yes. Why couldn't you use that leverage to demand through your friends that something be done about those Democratic senators who were undecided? Well, uh, I have done and am doing my best to do that. Um, but tell me what happened. I mean, it's of interest that you, with, all, with your reputation and credibility, and knowing what you knew, couldn't have more of an impact. Well, um, there are a great many of us, you know, who know a great deal about this, and um, some of us were consulted by some people, uh, me included. I did my best to have uh, yeah. these thoughts become part of the process, and, um, you know, I... Or are you disappointed? Are you, were you surprised? Was it just male bonding, or what happened? Well, the male bond is a very powerful thing, and, you know, men do collude uh, to protect each other's reputation in public. And 
Uh, I think that a lot of them, you know, I don't know, I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but there is a certain glass house phenomenon yeah. here. And some, uh, you know, and Clarence Thomas did his best to play on that, you know, basically by saying, you know, how would any of you feel being in this position? Don't think this can't happen to you. You let this happen to me. You just wait. And, you know, that sort of thing makes them less uh, energetic, shall One we say, One last quick proceeding. question. Do you think... I wish I really knew the answer to your question. And I do, too. I think that, you know, more people pursuing that and more uh, people at all levels uh, pushing on their senators about that. Uh, I mean, I think ultimately the explanation, they're all men, uh, is, is on one level right and on another level it, unsatisfying and inadequate. Final question. I'm over, over time and you're going to stay with us. But do you believe that the conscience of the nation with respect to the issue of sexual harassment has been seared, that somehow we have reached another plateau yes, of sensitivity? Yes, I do. I do. I think that when about a third of the American public believes a black woman who accuses a man of sexually abusing her, uh, that we've gone from absolute zero uh, of belief in women uh, to a significant percentage of the country. And I also think that when a man who is being considered for uh, a Supreme Court justiceship can be uh, publicly held accountable uh, for his treatment of, w of women, even so far as he has now, even if he is confirmed, the fact that which, is, by the way, it seems to me, uh, may well have contributed to his rage in this. Mm -hmm. uh, it may not have been that he was so outraged that he didn't do it and he was being unfairly accused, although, of course, that is possible. Yeah, well, let's give him the benefit but of doubt on I'm that. I'm saying that's possible. Of course it's possible. Um, but the, the other possibility is that he is outraged at being held to account by, like, just her yeah. um, and, as, and for just this and something like that. Um, you know, as if something like that could be this important. And the fact is that the American public uh, believes uh, that it is very important. And, you know, we'll see uh, ultimately how far that goes. But, yes, I think that, that things have changed in terms of that level of accountability. Catherine McKinnon, will, Professor Catherine McKinnon will stay with us. And we'll be joined by Elizabeth Holzman, Dr. Theodore Rubin, and Attorney Leon Frigman, and J. Harry Smith, former president of the Essex County College. And we'll also take a break and just remind you, if you haven't seen this already, a quick excerpt of some of the compelling highlights from the hearings on the confirmation of Judge Thomas. Here it is, back in a moment. There is nothing in the statement that, uh, or nothing in my background, nothing in my statement, there is no motivation that would show that I would make up something like this. And I guess one really does have to understand something about the nature of sexual harassment. Uh, it is very difficult for people to come forward with these things, these kinds of things. And it wasn't as though I rushed forward with this information. I cannot, I can only show, tell you what happened in the, to, to the best of my recollection what occurred and and ask you to take that into account this is a circus it's a national disgrace and from my standpoint as a black american as far as i'm concerned it is a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves to do for themselves to have different ideas and it is a message that unless you kowtow to an old order, this is what will happen to you. You will be lynched, destroyed, caricatured by a committee of the US, U.S. Senate rather than hung from a tree. That's what I thought. It was a weekend where a few Americans left their television sets. Few dramas have been so riveting as the one played out between Anita Hill and Judge Clarence Thomas. Everyone has an opinion as to who is telling the truth. Many are still baffled. Tonight, we want to hear from you as well as our guests. Who do you believe? Has the Senate committee been fair? Have they asked the right questions? Was the spectacle embarrassing for the country? The phones are open, and I hope you will call us with your comments at 1-800-245-9638. Here to guide us in our discussion are city of control and former Congresswoman Elizabeth Holtzman, psychiatrist Dr. Theodore Rubin, Hofstra Law Professor Leon Friedman, and J. Harry Smith, former president of Essex County College. Welcome, one and all. Let me look at this first. Uh, with, as a psychiatrist, looking at this, um, 
A lot of us were concerned because the question frequently made was there ought to be a pattern. There's a cluster of activity when you have sexual harassment. Uh, Tell me what I should know. Well, that's simply not true. You can uh, there be isolated <clears throat> examples. There can be isolated examples, and uh, even if there is a pattern, it's usually very well hidden. It's a very private matter, and uh, uh, people don't speak about it. So when so when you, when you have all these people who knew Judge Thomas, I'm not suggesting that all those people who were familiar with him, secretaries, assistants, people who worked closely with him, people who knew him came forward and says, it's unbelievable. We can't imagine. Well, it's also uh, unbelievable when uh, the nice boy next door suddenly kills six or ten people yeah. and becomes a mass murderer. And nobody, everybody says, but he was so quiet, yeah. so nice, mm -hmm. went to work, mm -hmm. and so on. I mean, I'm not suggesting that uh, Judge Thomas uh, actually did engage in this or didn't, but uh, that's no proof of anything. Well, what's your reaction to the uh, what you heard with respect well, my to my reaction is that you're dealing with uh, material which is uh, largely connected in some way psychologically. I shouldn't even say in some way directly. You're dealing with psychodynamics, as it were, uh, in a setting where you can't ask questions that are of a psychological importance. Like? <sighs> like the history of each of these individuals, yeah. the sexual history, among other things. Yeah. What would you have wanted to have asked Judge Thomas? Uh, I'd like to know what, uh, it's, it's a question that would only be asked in a therapist's okay. office, but uh, I would say, well, what happened in your first marriage? What happened between you and your wife? I'd like to hear what she'd have to say. Uh, was there any kind of history that suggests and, brutality? And what about uh, Professor McKinnon's remarks about pornography? Oh, well, how she feels about men generally, uh, what is her history vis-a-vis yeah. -vis men. Uh, there's, there's much to be asked, but that is not the setting for it. And when the rules are laid down that you can't ask about private lives in a thing that is so private, in a subject that is so private, it's yeah. like asking a surgeon to do an appendectomy with his hands tied behind his back. Let me, that brings me to, to Leon Fringman, Hofstra professor. Uh, what about the rules and about the questions that were asked as a lawyer, as a law professor? It was disgusting. It was a disgrace. The whole process was awful. They wouldn't ask questions. They would get up there with a 20-minute <clears> introduction <throat> in which they would throw out whatever garbage they thought. And it wasn't a question. When, when uh, Clarence Thomas was on the stand on, on Saturday, hatched through all these accusations against uh, Anita Hill. He didn't confront her with those accusations the day before. The whole thing was just a disgrace. What should have been asked? Well, first of all, and uh, Liz uh, pointed this out uh, uh, before, it shouldn't have been done by the full Senate. It should have been done by counsel, as in the Iran-Contra affair. It should have been circumscribed in a certain way. There should have been more of an effort to, to get at the facts. They shouldn't have tried to do the whole thing in a week. The whole yeah. thing was a disgrace. Let me come to the point that Professor McKinnon made, which is that a witness, a judge who is up for confirmation, someone who's up for confirmation to the Supreme Court, has no right in a hearing like that to decide what he will be asked and what he will not be asked, or what she will be asked and what she will not be asked? Well, you have a right to refuse to answer questions, and then the Senate committee has a right not to confirm you. Yeah. If, if you're not, they're not satisfied with the, with the answers or the refusal to, to discuss it, you can say, well, for lack of candor, we're not going to confirm you. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to throw them in jail, but, but you certainly... what about, say, drug use? Would he have been able to say, um, I won't discuss... That's my private life, and I won't discuss it. It's private. Well, I don't know where Doug, most people consume drugs. Doug Ginsburg found out what happened on that one. Yeah. I mean, he was forced to answer the question. Well, but he didn't it, go in front of the committee, you know, and say, uh, I refuse to discuss my private life. We well, don't even know if the pornography was in his private well, life. Well, the answer, the answer is ask. the Senate should have said, if you don't answer that question, we're not going to confirm you. Well, they but they weren't prepared asked, to do that. And then yeah, he could have yeah, said, yeah, well, that's yeah, in yeah. my uh, private uh, life. All right, let me, let me and then I'm coming to you. Yeah, uh, is, has this been the pattern when you've confirmed judges for the Supreme Court, this which they're talking about? Do you think it should not be the pattern? I, if it were, I think it would have been put into the system. Yeah. This is the exception. The main issue here is the leak that took place. Not whether he uh, did something or likes pornography. That's not what it is. You take every other Supreme Court justice and ask him the same question. I think that I American think... women have a right to know the answer. No, to that. don't, don't Liz make Holtz. it American like women. Something. You can't yeah, speak I'm for American that. women, okay. please. Sorry. Liz Holtz. Um, I was on the House Judiciary Committee, and I know something about committee investigations. 
in Watergate, the House Judiciary Committee did a very thorough investigation. But it hurt they had counsel, and they didn't have a time limit. And I think the, the problem here is not the leak. The fact of the matter is that you had a serious allegation made under oath by a person of extraordinary reputation and someone with a, who was a law professor, a graduate of Yale Law School, couldn't be pushed under the rug and shouldn't have been. The question is, how should the Senate have dealt with it? Once you put an arbitrary time limit, you can't conduct a serious investigation, and they didn't. There could have been eyewitnesses. The uh, psychologist here says this takes pa place in private, but a door could have been left open. A speakerphone could have been left on. A clerk could have walked into the room by Why mistake. Why would someone have stepped forward if that had happened? Well, <laughs> look at what happened to hmm. Professor Hill. You know why someone's not going to step forward. In fact, Angela Wright didn't hmm. come forward in person. And you may ask whether she herself felt so intimidated because of what by happened the Professor Hill. Because of the kind but of that... questioning. And that, whether they did step, and wait, 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 Professor Hill herself didn't voluntarily come forward. It's only because people went out and questioned her. I, as a district attorney with a thousand member staff, have been responsible for supervising investigations of sexual harassment. People don't come forward. You have to go out and question other employees who, were, who might have seen. We found eyewitnesses that we didn't expect to find. We found other corroborating evidence. No serious effort of this kind yeah. was made, and that's what makes this, in many ways, a sham. The allegations are too serious. The Supreme Court is too important. The reputation so of, you of are, uh, Judge Thomas is too important, and that of Professor Hill. It should have been done in a serious, professional way, and it was not. But it seems to me the principal object of, of that, of your accusation that it was a sham, should be directed at Chairman Biden and the Democratic majority. I, I, I'm not saying this is not a, uh, a, that this is a nonpartisan issue. This is a question of how it should have been done. I have the same problem with the Iran-Contra hearings, where they put an arbitrary time limit and they never got to the truth. If you want to get to the truth, you have to do it in a professional way. And as a lawyer, I mean, Leon could say the same thing. Anyone who's done investigations, if you put an arbitrary time limit, you tie your hands and it makes a real, raises real doubts about whether they want to find the truth or they just want to throw people in a gladiatorial ring like the Romans and see who came out on top after a duel. That's not a truth-finding process. And it demeans, I think, the seriousness of this issue. Do you think Judge Thomas came out on top? I, I don't think anybody came out on top in the end. And I think what happened here was, unfortunately, because it wasn't a fact-finding process, the Republican senators used it to attack and to politicize the matter. They attacked the reputation of Professor Hill. And there was no one there to defend her because there was nobody who should have been defending her. They should have been trying to find the truth. And that wasn't what happened. So the process got politicized, the truth got distorted, and it was Democrats buried. Democrats attacked Judge Thomas? I, I don't think they were well, there. Well, that's such an imbalance to say that they attacked Anita Hill, the Republicans attacked they did. Anita Hill, and what did the Democrats do? Run off well, and pat Thomas on the no, forehead? No, I think they asked him. I think they asked him well, legitimate questions. Well, that's the same thing that both But they did. didn't. Don't make a distinction oh. that's totally invalid. No, it wasn't. Get, I've they, got some phone calls I want to get into, but go ahead. I'd just like to say, you know, <clears throat> if you question women carefully, and in the privacy of, a, of an office where you can question them carefully, you know, where they're free to speak and have a decent relationship with the questioner. Let's say the questioner is a psychiatrist, like myself. You'll find that an enormous number of women have indeed uh, been subject to sexual harassment. Of that enormous number, none of them come forward. It's very, very rare indeed. So, I mean, this is evidence of nothing that she didn't come forward 10 years ago or whenever. Uh, this is the common practice. People do not. Uh, Precisely that. Look what did happen when she does. It's, uh, there's no profit in it. I don't. Do you think that most people are making that most people don't agree with you? I mean, don't you think the majority of people agree with you about that? Don't have some understanding now? Do you? Do I think that people they, they more know, understand that of the fact that a lot forward? of people there's more understanding of sexual harassment and that that people don't come forward for lots of reasons and. You're shaking your head. I right? think some, you know, but there are an awful lot of people who no, say, no, if I this think... happened to her 10 years ago, why didn't she bring it out before no. now? And, yeah. you know, there are a million good reasons not to, including, you know, do you want to be treated like she was treated? Including, you know, can your dignity match hers? Can, you know, your uh, composure, your way of presenting yourself, your grace under pressure? I mean, women look at her and, you know, this is the most credible witness. I, I don't know what you think about it, but I think she's the most credible witness you're going to have. She was credible, but why didn't and they call any experts? Why didn't they call psychiatrists and psychologists to say how people behave, that they well, don't come forward? Evidently, that they could... Chairman Biden said they considered that and decided not to. Well, exactly. Also, That's, again, you know, uh, an example of how they treated this in a casual way. You how people way. are going to feel after this. Well, most people, you know, are terribly impressed by this great righteous indignation. 
uh, you know, the, the judge says, I'm not going to speak about anything like that. Uh, I'm, this is categorically wrong, and that's that. That impresses people, but it's ha it has no substance. Right, well, you me, asked about the Supreme Court justice. I mean, until, 19, until the 1960s, you didn't even have hearings on Supreme Court justices. They would never appear to answer any questions. Until and for the, 1991, you never had any go through what Judge Thomas is going well, through. You didn't have anyone coming it, forward the way that's Professor correct. Hill if, did. If someone, if someone had if come forward... if there wasn't a leak, as much as she said that well, the leak was unimportant, if there wasn't a leak, the forum would have been totally different. Yeah, but none of us would have known about any of this. You were not we would supposed have known even to know. Anita yeah, but, Hill but did not true, want her name revealed. This woman did not come out seeking notoriety. But that's if there hadn't true. been the leak, there would not have been a full discussion of the issue And the issue as was well. the leak. You can get a full no. discussion in an executive session. But it hadn't you happened. you know that. But, it had, but, Mr. Smith, it had not happened. There had not been a full discussion of the issue, had it? Within the executive session. Because the chairman made a session. very hard decision, and I think uh, Chair, uh, Senator Biden addressed that issue. They made a very hard decision. And then when they said, okay, it's of magnitude where we should do something about it, Right. The leak occurred. And the decision was made out of sensitivity to Absolutely. her desire to remain the secret. Leak so I think the chronology is necessary. You should get it in focus. Let me take some and phone you calls. you don't have it in focus. Go ahead. Hello? Hi, go ahead. Hi, yes. Um, I have a question for Professor McKinnon. I'd like to know whether or not um, she seems to be, uh, with all due respect to her work in uh, women's defense issues and sexual harassment, right. uh, a bit annoyed with the fact that her... She was not able to in, uh, perhaps lend her influence in this particular situation. And I'd like to know whether or not she feels a bit um, uh, deflated by the fact that many of the women who were actual supporters of Clarence Thomas were women of equal or superlative qualifications, as she has. I remember watching her on a program um, several weeks ago, and I remember she mentioned something about the fact that bec uh, many women do not come forward to give their support to people or women who have claimed sexual harassment because they themselves are in a situation of intimidation by their bosses. And what's your and question? That... Pardon? And what's your question? Well, I'd like to know whether or not she feels that uh, she was not able to influence the situation, uh, a woman of her character and qualifications and notoriety, because the women who were supporters of Judge Thomas were of equal or superlative qualifications as her own. No, I, I didn't feel anything about that. In fact, I was quite surprised when Charlie even brought it up. Uh, it hadn't, in fact, uh, crossed my mind uh, that I should have had any more effect on the process. I was actually called uh, by several offices. I, they asked me about several things. I told them what I thought. I was yeah. very honored to yeah. be asked. Yeah, I, that, I should take the credit or blame for that. I, I was interested because of her reputation and that she was disappointed in the questions were asked and the investigation that took place, fair to say. You said that to me. Yes, Charlie, I was. And that feeling that, that you might have, she might have called the senators and because of her reputation been able to at least raise those questions and gotten a satisfactory answer as to why certain lines of inquiry had not taken place. Actually, Charlie, raising it made me think for the first time I should have been more aggressive about it. All right, that, let me take another phone call. I'll be right with you, Mr. Smith. Go ahead. Yes, hi. This hi. question is for Mr. Smith. Yes, go ahead. Um, given your, seems to me, reluctance to kind of engage the other panelists. I was wondering if you thought that this process was racially motivated at a certain point. If it didn't begin that way, that at the end it ended up being that way. And if you kind of agreed with Judge Thomas's assertion that this was a high-tech lynching. I think it was a high-tech lynching, but I don't think it was racially motivated. Uh, I have difficulty with much of the discussion going on here as though sexual harassment was a recent invention and only has taken on a certain amount of a certain construct as a consequence of it reaching the white woman. I would say that I, as a black male, has suffered more sexual harassment historically in this country than has the white woman. And for now, for us to be saying we have sexual harassment for the first time, it's ludicrous. Well, I, I don't think, I think it was a power move and not a racial move. Yeah, by who? But who made the move? Who, who's behind Whoever all of this? Whoever made the leak. I can't answer that. Neither and every senator has denied that the leak came from his office. Well, but I think, uh, Mr. Smith, that you're denying the reality in your statement of the experience of black women who have been sexually harassed. After oh, no. all, it was I didn't Professor deny Hill. the black woman. I well, said the black they, but don't But don't put down the experience. I mean, you're transforming this now into a racial matter. No, no. Women, no. black and oh, white, no. have been victims of sexual harassment. Why is it when you say harassment? it's the white woman, it's not racial? When I say it's the black male, it's racial. 
have well, I heard or well, I've heard because you because here. you've compartmentalized it on a racial well, basis. This is you? a gender fact. No, I didn't. No, yes, I didn't. You have. No, I didn't. I have heard this nothing is, about male harassment. We were talking black or white. Well, there could be men who are harassed in the workplace, I'm but the figures on that, but the figures on sexual harassment of men turn out to show that it's a very yeah. minor well, problem. You're, you're a student. The number of women. You know is, history. You know law. I don't think you could tell me that well, the black male has not suffered sexual harassment in this country. What do you mean by that? It's awfully hard for me to tell you what one has to endure. I mean sexually. Sexually. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that even the male organ could be removed in a racial thing. Yes. A young man like Emmett Till, and you know who, who the Emmett Till case. Oh, yes. The boy was harm seriously because he just looked at somebody. And you right. ask me, what do I mean as regards the black male and sexual harassment? Okay, what, what you mean, though, I, I mean think... that there has been sexual harassment of the black male since the day this country was put together. You mean the use of And I think what happened to Clarence use... Thomas is an extension of that harassment. Okay, so you think it's a, a racist use of unfounded rape charges? And also oh, no, not a sexual, in this sexual physical attack of course. that is abusive toward black men. That's, That's absolutely accurate. Of course, that. it's absolutely of course. true. It's just that sexual harassment, at least as a term, is something somewhat term. different. It became a vulgar term now, and we always right. use it in it reference means, to the woman. And in, you know, that's no, it also right. happens to men, but it doesn't tend well, to mean well, what you're talking about. Well, I think it's happening. I think it happened to Clarence Thomas. Can you give that a thought? But, but we're talking about something a little bit but different. See, we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace in which women who are in the workplace are uh, intimidated by people who are superiors in general circumstances. That's a very, that's a little bit different from what you're talking about. I think it's a narrower term and it applies across it gender yeah. and it applies it, it, across it, it, gender it, it, lines, it, racial yeah. lines. If I understand what saying. you know about it, you're talking about violence against black men as, as a as a, form of, as a form of racism. And sexually right. motivated. Yeah. Right. 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 Absolutely. Right. This is what you got but, from uh, her. Yeah. yeah, let me. You got exactly from her what we would get in the way of sexual. No, no, no. Let, she let me, said it came from pornography. Right. Let me take another phone which call. Which is also where you see it. Yeah. Uh, Being call, done. Call it. Go black ahead. Men. Yes. My question is: Why are we so willing to presume that a man of Clarence Thomas's reputation can be guilty of sexual harassment as, in, as one uh, one incident, and why are we not willing to presume? that someone with Anita's reputation couldn't be guilty of lying at one point, or at all. Of lying. Lying. lying, lying. Well, speak to that, Professor McKenna. I don't think we're assuming she couldn't be guilty of lying or that he couldn't, you know, necessarily be guilty of, of do, or is necessarily guilty of doing it. I don't think we're deciding this on their reputations. I at least am not. Um, I hadn't decided it at all going into this. I decided uh, what I came to based on watching what few hearings that we had um, and, you know, seeing her, seeing the support that she had, uh, not just people standing up making political speeches saying what a good and, and, and truthful person she is, uh, but See, people talking about, you know, what she had said to them over a period of years. That corroboration was crucial to you in well, her it's credibility. Um, crucial, I, because that was the principal corroboration she had. Well, yes, but she also doesn't need any. Her word is evidence. It's also, too it that she, uh, <laughs> It's interesting, too, that she was willing to take a lie detector test. It's not important, really, how she made out on the test. But this willingness to risk so much with taking it, let's say she failed on the test, this would be almost catastrophic for her. But uh, this openness and willingness is, uh, you know, that's pretty strong stuff. Yeah. You know, I on, just want to say, may I say one thing more. I think one of the broader difficulties, and you even see it demonstrated here to a certain extent, is that men and women don't speak the same language. They don't have the same frame of reference. There's great confusion between them, much misunderstanding. They have to learn much more about each other. Young men have to learn, among other things, which has ramifications that go way beyond this case. They have to learn that when a woman says no, she means no, not yes, do you see? Having learned in pornography that no means yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, not only in pornography, but uh, this whole macho thing. Right. That's but gone I mean, in their bodies, they learn it because they've been using the pornography to learn sex. I must tell you, though, you yeah. know, I must remind you that men are brought up by women. <laughs> you know, we do have mothers, and we learn a lot from our mothers who tell us how to be and what to do, and mm -hmm. tell us all about their, you know, and fears and projections. And a lot of times, men don't whatnot. listen very well yeah. to their mothers. Well, I'll tell you. Let me take another. Most of us listen. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I have a question for a psychiatrist. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Rubin. Um, he brushed Dr. off. Dr. Rubin. He 
brush off the fact that uh, Miss Hill had waited 10 years to uh, bring back bring up the charges as normal. Is it normal for someone who's been harassed to follow the employer to future jobs, to uh, continually to call the harasser, and to talk very fondly of the harasser to numerous people? Let me answer that. Uh, most of us now know, uh, after uh, many, many cases, that the victim often identifies with the victimizer. Uh, so that it is uh, not only normal, it's the usual state of affairs. Besides which, if you have a boss on whom your whole future life and career depend on, professionally that is, uh, I don't see anything inconsistent. I mean, yes, it's quite normal or appropriate to follow that man, even though you may have great misgivings about him. This to me is evidence of absolutely nothing. Mr. Go ahead. Tell me. Well, uh, I, I want to sort of take a look at the bigger picture, picture because of the whole question about the leak. I mean, this could have taken place with respect to a secretary of state or, or some other uh, uh, position in the executive department. It happens at the Supreme Court level. And number one, it shows the absolute desperation on, on both sides, by the way, to get this person up there. I don't think, I think the leak was a terrible thing to happen. And it shouldn't have happened. But I think that the tactics of Simpson and, and uh, Spectre, Spectre and Hatch were even more horrible. What tactics? The, the tactics, the, the absolute gutter slime tactics that they used. But that's against a description. Alfredo. What tactics? What, what Hatch did was not to, not to confront her, not to ask her directly, did you make this up? Did this come out of this article? Did this come out of The Exorcist? But he used these accusations the next day when there was no one to respond to. Well, he did more than that. He repeated the whole list of, you know, uh, of uh, wrongdoings uh, again and again and again, and eventually managed to get it across that it was almost as if she had done these yeah. things. Now, why well, do you, well, aren't and, they and skilled they're, they're lawyers? They're Specter accusing yes, her of perjury. Specter yeah. accusing her of perjury on the basis of absolutely nothing. Were you comfortable yes. with Metzenbaum? Metzenbaum did awful also. They, oh, they, yeah. they well, were all give a, give a balance to it. They well, were disgraced to because they I, did I was not hoping do you would. Because My they God. didn't conduct this in a fair way, as Liz said, in a professional way with counsel leading, yeah. the, leading it, with enough time to get facts. Enough time but to Liz's get principal point was they didn't have enough time. Is that well, right? There was no unlimited plus, opportunity for question the, and answer. Plus, the way they conducted it meant that since it, it should have been a fact-finding process, a truth-finding process, instead it turned out to be a political process, highly political, in which there was an agenda yeah. on the part of the Republicans to try to defame her or destroy yeah. her ability to uh, destroy the charges. The Democrats felt Whoa. uncomfortable about, uh, about being in that posture. Maybe they felt, uh, may, most of them, well, I don't know the reason for it, but in any case, they didn't defend her. That shouldn't have been their role to defend her. I get back to square one. Yes, but I think... Well, uh, one second. Let me okay. let Mrs. Holzman finish. But I, but I do agree with, uh, with Leon that, uh, that uh, the, the use of words like perjury were really unfortunate. I mean, as a former prosecutor, and he had no business doing that. Did he later pull back from that? Uh, no, really. I thought he'd not, pull back from it. Not really, and it's, it but, it's, it but it was out there, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. I think the real, what really concerns me here is that sexual harassment, which is something that, unfortunately, millions of American women suffer in the workplace, may result, while it may raise a level of consciousness of people in this country about the problem, what happens if this woman, with her reputation, is found not to be credible? Who will come forward if there are no eyewitnesses? Who will come forward if there isn't? Contem if there aren't contemporaneous yeah. notes. I mean, the suggestion that she should have made notes at the time, yeah. that's, it's ludicrous. I, I mean, who is a victim that sits down and makes notes? So, I mean, some people may have the presence of mind, right. but most people who are victimized uh, yeah. aren't. I asked and my, I asked my who, wife. You're talking about a victim here. Yes. I asked yeah. my wife if she, ahead, was I'll, ever, I'll I'm sorry, if she was ever sexually harassed. Uh, you know, the first time you'd ever ask her? Yes. First it never, time. It never occurred to me to ask her. Yeah. Relative to the program, I asked her. She said yes. And she told me of the incident when she was about uh, 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. worked in a little retail store, mm -hmm. and uh, she went to the back of the store. This was a uh, sold children's clothes, and uh, the boss went up and began to feel her, you know, feel her breasts. And actually. it never come up. How many years you been married? Only 45. <laughs> so 45 years later, she tells you. Only no. when I ask her. Only when you ask her. I have problems with us now structuring it so that uh, yeah. Anita is the accused. She is a, she, Thomas, she was accusing the to, Judge right. Thomas. 
she had the burden of proof on her shoulders. I think she failed somewhat, miserably. She's I mean, not running for the Supreme Court. did somewhat turn her into the accused. No, no, that's, that's not the issue going well, for the Supreme I'm, Court. Unfortunately, the issue is not there. The issue is that she was making accusations to him. It was not basically a sexual harassment allegation. Let me just ask you one thing, she Mr. Smith. was talking about a character flaw. If, if these allegations had been true, right. do, you, do you think it should prevent Judge Thomas from being confirm, confirmed for the United States Supreme Court? It has greater ramifications than that, because if it's true, I think he should not only be not confirmed, he should be removed from where he is. From the Court of Appeals. From the Court of Appeals. Okay. And are you, because uh, you're a Republican, I'm a Republican and a strong sure. supporter of Clarence Thomas, I'm an elected official in my town, and of proud of Clarence Thomas, uh, are you, do you believe that Professor Anita Hill was lying? I didn't have the feeling that the woman was lying. I don't think that she would go up there. And by the same token, I think I felt Clarence Thomas was telling the truth, too. I, I'm not capable of making okay. that sort of distinction. I thank you all, Professor Rubin, Mary Smith, Leon Friedman, Liz Holzman, and Catherine Kennedy. Thank you.